This time on Rad Rat Video, we talk about high trucks versus low trucks. Is there really a difference? Which one is better? Answer all your questions right here. Let's get started. Welcome to Rad Rat Video. Here on the channel, we talk about all kinds of skateboarding topics from trick histories to game reviews to learning tricks on the Shred School, all kinds of different stuff. Subscribe so every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday you can learn something new. But today we're talking about high trucks versus low trucks. Originally, this was supposed to be an Ask Rad Rat question, but I got the same question maybe three or four times within a week. A lot of people have been wanting to know about this, so I figured I'd promote it to a real video. I would do some more research and do it upright. So first thing I want to figure out is what the actual difference is between a high and low truck. Is there a definition? Is there an industry standard of some kind that sets them apart? And the answer, unsurprisingly, is no. And not only that, but most truck brands do not publish specs for their trucks at all. So if it's a brand that brags about how low they are, about how light they are, you won't find a height or weight most of the time. So it's very difficult to actually find out some solid information, but there are a few brands that have different size models that publish their specs. The first of which is Crux, and I have a couple of those here. So the standard Crux, which is what I have on my board right here, these are 55 millimeters and 335 grams, I believe. This is a download, this is 52 millimeters and 332 grams or three grams lighter. It's about two or three paper clips less weight, not much of a difference. But I'm, I'm gonna put them side by side real quick to give you an impression of what that's like. Um, it's not a very scientific comparison because these are mounted right now, but that'll give you an idea roughly of the kind of difference we're looking at. Um, not a huge difference, but it is a little bit uh, lower. The weight, really not a big deal. The other brand I found is Venture. So their lows are 48.3 millimeters. Standards are 53.5. Weirdly, they have some different lines of their trucks that have a high model, but it's actually the same height as the mid from other lines. So it seems like they kind of use mid and high interchangeably, um, which is kind of weird. Uh, another thing really weird about Venture is that they have so many different types of models that are light. They have their V-lights and all this other kind of stuff. They don't publish weights for that stuff anywhere at all. There's also Independent, which has two different models right now. They have the Stage 11s, which are 55 millimeters, and their Titaniums, which are 53.5. They aren't considered high and low. They aren't called that, but they are two different models with different sizes. So when you talk about high versus low, within a brand it means something, but in general it really doesn't mean much at all. Like the uh, Bullet, they have their standard truck actually lower than a Crux down low. So that's a little bit weird. Um, the lowest truck I was able to find, keeping in mind that most of them don't publish this stuff, is Tensor. So they have the Tensor mag lights and those are 45.5 millimeters tall. But what does that mean? Can you really feel that difference? So the difference between those tensors and the highest truck that I found are nine and a half millimeters, which is actually kind of a lot. In any other part of your board, that would make a big difference. That's about a third of an inch, maybe a little bit more. So that's the difference between a 775 deck and an 8.1, pretty major difference. It's also the same difference as having nine and a half millimeter bigger wheel. Actually, it's worse than that because the wheel is halfway above the axle and halfway below the axle. So the height of your board is actually only half of the difference. If you go from a 50 to a 52, that's only gonna make you ride one millimeter taller. So it'd be like riding a 19 millimeter bigger wheel than what you do now. That is a really big difference, but can you really feel it? Um, that would be up to you. So I switched from those Crux down lows to the standards that I showed you, and I really didn't notice much of a difference. That was really recent. Uh, in the past, I switched from tensors, uh, tensor lows with 52s to crux with 56s, and I really didn't feel much of a difference then either. Uh, let me know if it's any different for you. All this stuff kind of blows me away because you think about how specific every other measurement on your board is. People have their wheels locked down to a single millimeter. You know, you don't want the 50s or the 52s, you gotta get the 51s. There are people who will only skate a 51 and you know, your deck width, how many people just buy whatever, you know, you get your specific size, you get used to it and you stick to it. But with trucks, 
they're kind of random. If you switch to brands, you might be, you know, three or four millimeters off uh, without even knowing it. So it's kind of crazy to me that they're so all over the place. But does it really matter? So what are the pros and cons of having high versus low trucks? This is something that I was kind of surprised to do some research about because the skate industry has been obsessed with low trucks for a very long time. You know, being lower and being lighter has been all that anyone advertises about for years. But what is the actual point? The biggest thing that you'll see all the time is that lower trucks are more stable and they're better for flip tricks. So if you go to a buyer's guide on a skate shop website or anything like that, you ask around, you look at Reddit threads and everything, people always say lower trucks are more stable, and better for flip tricks. Over and over and over, that's all you'll ever see. But I can't really figure out why. What is it about lower trucks that make you more stable? It's not like a taller board just tips over randomly while you're rolling around. You know, if your trucks are a little bit loose and you land heavy on the side, you turn. You don't just flop over. So that is a little bit weird to me that people say that all the time. Although it makes a little bit of sense in theory. So if you look at your board, the center of gravity that it'll flip around, let's say it's right here. If the truck's a little bit lower, then it gets closer to the board. So it'll flip a little bit quicker, but that's only theoretical. That's a very small difference. I think the width of your board would be a much bigger difference than how high the trucks are. Um, but a lot of people say that. Now for me, like I mentioned, I switched from tensor lows to crux um, a long time ago. This was maybe 10 years ago. And I was doing triple kick flips. I was doing Casper flips. I was doing all kinds of weird stuff, really technical. That's what I was into. And I didn't notice. I got a bigger setup, bigger wheels, taller trucks because I had a, a mini ramp I had just built. So I was having trouble keeping speed with my low setup, went with some bigger stuff and had a, an easier time with that, but I didn't lose any of my tech stuff. I didn't have any problem with that at all. So I thought it was kind of weird that everyone parrots this idea of them being more stable when as someone who would have really felt that, I didn't notice anything at all. Uh, the other supposed benefit is the weight. And I've talked about weight of different stuff on the channel before, but I had some of those specs right there. The crux were three grams different. Um, and that is almost nothing. A paper clip is about a gram and a half, like the jumbo size. Tape two paper clips to your board and see if you'll notice. Although you have to count the weight of the tape too. So maybe tape one paper clip to your board and see if that really makes any difference to you. It seems like such a misguided way to save a little bit of weight. Although looking at this chart made by Tensor makes this a little bit more of a blurry issue. So with some brands is a two or three gram difference, but with the Tensors, the high versus lows are 20 grams apart. So over both trucks, 40 grams, that's over an ounce. That would definitely be noticeable. But unless you go to your skate shop with a kitchen scale and a ruler and you figure out all this stuff, it's not really certain what you're gonna get or how much of a difference you'll even feel. So if those are the upsides, what are the downsides to having low trucks? The biggest, most obvious one you'll always hear is wheel bite. Uh, to avoid wheel bite, you have to go smaller and smaller with your wheels, um, which makes you keep less speed and all that kind of stuff. I mentioned I switched for my mini ramp. Definitely noticed a big difference when I sized up my wheels a little bit. So that is one of the big downsides. The second is the kingpin clearance. This is uh, kind of a weird issue to me because what are low trucks good for? Stability and tech. Well, tech is a lot of grinds, right? With the kingpin sticking out, you might find yourself in some trouble. One of the other things is the turning radius. Again, I didn't really feel this much of a difference myself, but maybe it's just the way that I skate. So the taller the truck is, the more, of, more room that it has to pivot. So when you turn, the truck can turn like this. If the truck is shorter, there's less of a way for it to turn. So it's kind of a small thing unless you really need to be able to carve, um, maybe skate a lot of ditches or something like that. Um, that could be a pretty big difference. And that's one of the major differences between having lows on a riser as opposed to just having a higher truck um, is that the extra distance between the pivot cup will give you a better turning radius. But the biggest benefit of having higher trucks is that you actually get more pop, which is a really controversial thing. If you ever look it up online, people debate it endlessly and argue about it, but if you cut through all the noise, it seems like most people will find that you have more pop 
Um, some other people may have trouble getting used to it or something, but for the most part, you do get more pop. And there are two big physics reasons why. First is that when the board is higher, the tail pops at more of an angle. So you can slide your foot up a little bit easier. Um, it's like having a steeper tail without having to have your foot be at an angle more when you pop. So that's one benefit. The second is that when the tail is higher off the ground, you have more room to get the tail to get some speed going and you can really snap it harder with the same amount of effort. So compare that to like ollieing out of a tail slide, you know, where you just kind of rock the tail a little bit. You don't have any room to build up speed and really snap it. So there is a difference there. And it's really interesting to me because it's not what you would think. A lot of people buy lo lower trucks or lighter in general anyway, to get more pop. They wanna have a board that's lighter so that they can pull it up with you easier. But in doing that, they might actually be hurting themselves. So it makes me think about uh, the town I live in. There's a lot of bike paths and stuff. A lot of people commute to work on their bikes. And every now and then, like every day basically, I'll see somebody who's sitting there on his bike. He's got the skin tight suit with the fake sponsors that he doesn't have. He'll have the helmet with the tail on it that's a little more aerodynamic. He'll have the wheels that are solid discs instead of spokes so they don't chop up the air. He'll have that carbon fiber frame bike that's thousands of dollars and he is 40 pounds overweight. And you think about, do you really notice that difference? Was it worth spending thousands more for a bike that weighs one pound less when you don't? Shouldn't you have bought a garage sale bike like I did and then maybe buy a treadmill too? <laughs> like, is that the best way to accomplish the goal that you want? If you're trying to get more height on your skateboard, going lighter is not really the best way to go. So I thought that was kind of interesting uh, and that's what it made me think of. But um, as someone who skates mostly technical, do a lot of flat ground, a lot of flip tricks, a lot of stuff like that, I've skated low trucks for a long time and I was surprised to find out some of these things that I did. So as I mentioned, I did switch to a higher truck and I never really noticed a difference. I think maybe next time I buy a new setup, I'm gonna go really low and just see if I really notice anything uh, because if anyone would benefit from it, it would be me. So uh, the one thing is that I skate my trucks for a long time. I'll switch out bushings and just keep them going until the axle nuts are just destroyed and they won't tighten anymore. So I don't have a ton of experience with a lot of different brands. I've only skated a few. If you've skated a lot of different trucks, you've made the switch back and forth, let me know what your experiences are like below. I would like to hear if there really is that much of a benefit to low and why is it that I have not felt it. So let me know about that below. Uh, until next time, here's more videos you might wanna check out and don't forget to subscribe by tapping my logo on screen so you can keep learning new things about skateboarding three times a week. Thanks for watching.